So let's start with part 21 of uh, the lecture on uh, catalytic organometallics. Subject of today is cobalt catalysis. With special emphasis on the cyclotrimerization of alkynes. Actually, this is already a rather old reaction. first observed already by Bertelot in 1866. Acetylene reacts at elevated temperatures of course, under pressure to give benzene. Meanwhile, there are lots of catalysts that uh, diminish the uh, temperature that is necessary, even to room temperature. So. Uh, as I said, a lot of catalysts are known. For instance, palladium on charcoal. Also, rhodium and ruthenium catalysts. Even some iron catalysts. But uh, most renowned for these type of transformations are cobalt complexes, reaction that has been intensively studied by Folhart and co-workers. Folhart at Berkeley University. General mechanism, a metal with its ligands reacts with alkynes, coordinating the alkynes, so a ligand exchange reaction twice the ligand exchange, and then metalla cyclopentadienes can be formed. We know this type of structures from uh, uh, Trost's palladium chemistry. It is known that some complexes then transform, some metallocyclopentadienes can transform to cyclobutadienyl complexes. You know, cyclobutadienyl, cyclobutadiene is anti-aromatic, but it can be very well stabilized by complex formation, and indeed, um, these are rather unreactive then. However, those metallocyclopentadienes can react with another equivalent of the alkyne, well, 
coordinating the alkyne and then either an insertion reaction might occur forming a metalla cycloheptatriene system reductive elimination than forming a benzene ring or and this is not clarified which is generally the preferred mechanism you can think of some kind of Diels Alder process with the metallocyclopentadiene In that case, you assume that you have a metalla norborna diene structure as reactive intermediate, and here the same. Reductive elimination then would give the aromatic system. Well, far more interesting than the synthesis of benzene itself are cases where you have a diene with the acetylenic functionalities connected by a tether. And you might have another alkyne. Well, and in this case, especially if R is rather bulky, for instance, TMS groups, which are frequently applied here, then the metalla cyclopenta diene and here a cyclopentadienyl cobalt carbonyl complex is frequently applied. So keep in mind this, this is carbon monoxide. Here we have cobalt. Okay? And today if I abbreviate that like this, then it is not a co-catalyst, it's cobalt catalyst. Okay? So, what will be the result of the process we have uh, discussed before? An annelated ring system is formed, an annelated benzene like this. And yields obtained are in the range of 30 to 95 percent. Let's have a look at the special case where N is just 2. In this case, we are dealing with hexadienes
So, and those substituents are, can be, so R2, R3, hydrogen, methyl, an ether functionality could be TMS, so cellulated could be phenyl group or an aryl group, or even with an ester functionality attached, all those work. Same catalyst as before, and then Oh, well, this is not right, like this. Okay, so this is the result, usually achieved range of 65 to 70% yield. Those benzocyclobutenes can be isolated under the reaction conditions of, or the moderate reaction conditions of this uh, cobalt catalysis. And, uh, well, for everyone it should be clear that uh, these structures are very valuable, keeping in mind that heating it up, or I think even in uh, photochemical activation, this bond might break. Giving a nice excess to highly reactive orthoquinonoid structures, which will readily undergo Diels Alder type re reactions, so cyclo addition reactions here at that highly reactive diene. As I said, very often bis-trimethylsalolacetylene bis is used and generally 65% yield of the aromatic product is formed, then you can Mm. You can introduce substituents by an electrophilic ipso substitution. So the first electrophile will then React, substitute, sub will substitute the first TMS group, and since the first electrophilic Ipsos substitution is about 40 times faster than the second one, it's no problem 
to introduce two different former electrophilic groups side by side here. So, next step then, the second electrophile and you have then two different functionalities introduced. So, this one is fast. This step usually is 40 times slower than the first one. Nice example is this one. An organo tin compound was applied. Cobalt catalyst, octane as the solvent, and a 50% yield. of this product was obtain, obtained. Treatment of this product, which has been isolated, as I said, in 50% yield, with butylithium in THF, gave a 65% yield of this structurally, structurally very interesting compound, annihilated benzene ring with uh, two strained rings attached. You might guess how this hydrocarbon is called, well, its name is rocketine, and you might guess why. As you should know from the palladium chem chemistry, palladium catalyzed reactions we discussed, it's rather easy to synthesize by Sonogashira coupling reactions, systems like that. So, and the result then are structures like that, dibenzocyclobutadienes, which are obtained all in moderate to very good yield. To my knowledge, rather good yields are obtained than uh, R and R prime, both are TMS groups. In that case, rather often the trimethyl, the bis trimethyl acetylene is even applied as the solvent. Well, you, you recover, of course, the excess reagent. There. Well, so, with R and R prime, this TMS, then you can treat this product
with this interhalogen compound in tetrachloromethane. which will lead then to this diiodo compound. Well, okay, and uh, then you certainly can imagine that with Sonogashira coupling reaction, first with TMS, acetylene, then deprotecting, usually with a fluoride, you can get to this bisacetylenic compound. Well, and then you can do that type of reaction once again and getting this longer. Or you do that twice on, on, on both sides. Lots of possibilities, of course. Imagine the completely brominated benzene, hexabromobenzene. Sonogashira coupling reaction performed six times you can get to this hexaethanol ethanol benzene with a 28% yield reported. So, and the reaction with this trimethylsilyl acetylene and the cobalt catalyst then led to this product Well, in 39% yield, which is rather good, keeping in mind that the reaction <coughs> had to proceed three times to get to the target molecule. Well, next, please try to solve a simple problem as an exercise. Please try to figure out what will be the product if you apply a cobalt catalyzed reaction with this substrate and no additional alkyne as reagent. So, solving that problem, well, let us simply draw the intermediary cyclometallated 
complex So, and now imagine it yields all the type reaction here or that insertion. Yeah, well, So, this transformation is a one step process, gave a 70% yield of this product. And you might imagine that it should be possible to, well, start from far more complicated structures related to that and build up helical structures, which has been done in rather low yield, but it has been achieved, and uh, those structures then are called helifenes. So, variations of this type of process, just one. So this uh, heptadiene with two TMS groups. Again, the usual cyclopentadienyl cobalt catalyst. But with acetonitrile as the solvent. So here we have a triple bond. And as the solvent with uh, excess then of acetonitrile, the acetonitrile moiety is introduced into the product, forming a pyridine derivative. So, and uh, just with aluminum oxide, as it turned out, filtrating on, uh, over neutral aluminum oxide is already sufficient for a, deep, uh, for a, for a proto desalination of this sensitive TMS group. Sorry, the methyl group here was missing. You noticed that already. This was the product which uh, was obtained with 76% overall yield. Especially the Fallhart group has applied also this type of process for natural product synthesis, the area of certain vitamins. Well, but one rather famous natural product synthesis from the Fallhart group we should uh, discuss 
it's uh, the Estrone synthesis, synthesis of racemic Estrone. So, and uh, Follard's group started from this hexadiene, which is treated with n lithium TMEDA tetramethylethylene diamine and secondly with ethylene oxide the parent oxyrane just to introduce this hydroxy ethyl group over all yield after a lot of optimization of course was 65% and now it should be able to explain why did we use three equivalents of n lithium. Well, if you want to deprotonate in proper gullic position, you have to deprotonate more acidic protons, acetylenic protons, first. First equivalent, second equivalent, then a third equi equivalent. So we are dealing with a tri ion stabilized a lithium compound, highly electron-rich and uh, stabilized with a TMEDA, of course. So, <coughs> next step in uh, the synthesis. Tosyl chloride, pyridine. for the tosylation of the alcohol. Secondly, sodium iodide and acetone. Well, process we would call a Finkelstein reaction. And 96% yield of this iodo compound, we call that A. So we need to synthesize coupling compound B. Starting from that cyclopentanone. At that time, this well is B. Synthesized racemically. How is this transformation achieved? Well, you need a conjugate addition reaction of a vinyl matter species which is, of course, a cuprate vinyl grignier plus copper iodide, then you will have the copper enolate, which is then trapped by a agent, 
simply TMS chloride, 89% as optimized result. So, putting A and B together with lithium amide in liquid, therefore cooled ammonia, gave then the nucleophilic substitution and uh, CC bond formation between that carbon with electrophilic carbon and with nucleophilic carbon. Let's see. Now it is set up for the cyclotrimerization reaction. This trimethyl siloacetylene and uh, the cobalt catalyst. Well, again, whole reaction racemic. So, according to my manuscript, this has not been isolated. directly treated for opening up under the appropriate condition, heating it up, having then the autoquinonoid system, which will readily undergo an intramolecular diels alder reaction. directly setting up the steroid framework <coughs> well but there is no naturally occurring steroid with uh, TMS groups. With trifluoroacetic acid in tetrachloromethane at lower temperatures, minus 30 degrees, rather selectively This position was decillulated 
with uh, a selectivity of 9 to 1. Well, that was based on an obs observation with uh, model compounds, and we were quite sure that this will work very well without an, a clear explanation for this nice result. So, and then um, an oxidation with lead trifluoroacetate then gave the final product an OH group here. This is then the racemic estrone. And the yield of, well, I should also give the yield of this product 71% starting from that uh, diain, and then the overall yield for this and that step was then 80%. I think a highly impressive reaction sequence. So, last brief subject for today is uh, cobalt catalysis from nature. Do you know a naturally occurring cobalt catalyst? Well, it is uh, vitamin B12. also called cobalamin so i think uh, we should not start drawing vitamin b12 to the blackboard please look that up yeah. i can tell you it's uh, you should know structure well uh, you should know that it is the most complicated, structurally complicated vitamin which we know. We need it to keep alive, of course, and it is uh, produced by bacteria, not by our own body. So, we need that vitamin through our food. Well, and um, lots of reactions for synthesis purposes have been tested. Most of them I found at rather low yield. Uh, okay, vitamin B12 catalysis is uh, optimized under uh, <laughs> conditions of life and uh, uh, not for the conditions in, in our uh, chemistry lab in the flask. N nevertheless, uh, I found two interesting reactions. One under the label green chemistry. An interesting reaction which um, was um, uh, observed uh, a couple of years ago, they combined vitamin B12. So, vitamin B12 with rose bengal. And you should know rose bengal is a photosensitizer. Well, its structure is not too complicated. Th 
four iodo atoms. Four chlorides here at uh, that uh, ring. Structure related to fluorescein, you know, know from our undergraduate lab. Well, this is a photosensitizer, and in the presence of reducing agents, in this case, This trishydroxyethylamine was used as a um, reducing agent, photochemically activated, activated the vitamin B12 is reduced and uh, effects a dechlorination, for instance, a dechlorination of this very well known structure. Who doesn't know what that is? Everyone should know that uh, this is DDT. So, and uh, with vitamin B12. This reducing, reducing agent and rose bengal, then already one hour reaction. Uh, this is efficiently dechlorinated once. And if you treat that even further, finally. you will end up at this dichloro still bean. Well, not preparative useful, but one can imagine for decon decontamination of uh, uh, polluted soil, it might be useful. However, one last example for an application for synthesis. These hydroxy are uh, hydroxylated olefins. Actually, the hydroxyl group is not uh, important, but it illustrates that it is tolerated for the process, process we now discuss. If you solubilize that in tetrachloromethane, then and add um, DBP dibenzoyl peroxide for inducing a radical chain process, then you radically add tetrachloromethane to the olefinic double bond. you get that in rather nice yield. Vitamin B12 as the catalyst and sodium borohydride as reducing agent, then results in a complete dechlorination 
with the formation of one CC bond giving a cyclopropane moiety. And this is achieved in about 70% yield. So, enough for today. Thank you for listening. Tomorrow we will discuss uh, nickel chemistry. See you tomorrow.